Money, money, money. In today's world, everything's about money. How much did he make? Whoa. Which company is gonna reach a trillion first? She made how much from her OnlyFans? Rolex is one of the biggest watch brands in the world. They must certainly make tons of profits, right? Or do they? Let's go back in time. 1905. Two fine gentlemen named Hans Wilsdorf and his brother-in-law Alfred Davis started the Wilsdorf and Davis company in London, England. What? Rolex is a British company? Not so fast, bucko. 1920. England is a hot mess after World War I. The climate just isn't right for a company like Wilsdorf and Davis. There are a lot of wartime taxes on luxury items and silver and gold are also taxed heavily. Wilsdorf decides to move operations to a more horology friendly country, Switzerland. Alfred Davis doesn't follow. At this point, Wilsdorf registers a new Swiss company, Montre Rolex SA. He's the only owner. The rest is history. Nineteen sixty. We're not immortal, we all have to go sometime. For Wilsdorf, his time was July 6, 1960, at age 79. Although Wilsdorf had two wives throughout his life, he didn't have any children. His sole baby was Rolex SA. Fortunately for us, Wilsdorf had created the Hans Wilsdorf Foundation 15 years prior to his death. When he passed away, his stake of 100% in the company was passed on to the foundation. Now, the question you've all been waiting for. Is Rolex a non-profit organization? Well, yes and no. Technically, Rolex is a for-profit company, but it is wholly owned by a charity. This means that the profits can be reinvested in Rolex first, for example in new equipment, research and development, more marketing, etc. But all surplus after that must be distributed for charity. This is different from a non-profit which needs to distribute 100% of its income. In 2019, Rolex made around $5.2 billion in sales. Profits? Well, it's kind of hard to tell. We can do one thing. Let's take a look at the competition. For instance, Rolex's biggest competitor is the Swatch Group. For the last four years, they average 8.9% of a net income margin on around $8 billion in revenue. We can round it out to about 10% income margin. This gives Rolex $520 million to reinvest or distribute. How much of this money goes back to charity? Let's take the Swatch Group for example. In the last four years, they totaled $2,963,000,000 in net income. For the same period, the dividend was $1,656,000,000 which is about 56% of the net income. Now, I know dividends and charity distributions are two totally different things, but it gives us a rough estimate of how much Rolex could potentially distribute if they wanted to. Let's recap. From Rolex's $5.2 billion in revenue, they probably make around $520 million in profit after taxes. From this money, they can distribute around 56% to charities, which gives us the magic number 
$291 million. Let's be conservative and round it down to $200 million to redistribute to charities. Boy, that's a lot of money. But where does it all go? Rolex are very secretive with how they manage their money. It's a private company, so we have access to no official statements. However, from Rolex.org, we know that lots of the money goes to children's charity. This is because Wilsdorf was an orphan from age 12. They invest a lot of money in orphanages, scholarships, apprenticeships, sports associations, and much more. We also know that another big chunk of the money goes toward cutting-edge entrepreneurial endeavors. Wilsdorf was an entrepreneur himself, and he had over 700 patents. It's no surprise to see that Rolex spends so much money on entrepreneurship and technology. But my question for you guys is, what would you do if you had $200 million to share with charities? Let me know what you would do in the comments below, and I will see you guys around next video.